Hey, Dr. B here, and let's take a look at mass spectrometry. In its simplest sense, this is a device which gives you the molecular weight of a substance. It can reveal isotopes, which is used occasionally. And here's a typical device. They've gotten smaller and cheaper over time. And the basic idea is that you take your unknown substance, it needs to be in a pure form, you hit it with an electric current. This will ionize your substance. Once you've done that, you can then separate those ions that are present uh, using a magnet, run them through a detector, calibrate it, and it should give you the molecular weight of your substance. Typically, you're only interested in the molecular ion, but these things here can be fragments that will form as soon as this thing ionizes. There's been entire books devoted to this over the years, but in my experience, this is largely ignored now that uh, other uh, more powerful techniques are available. Still, it's worth considering in some simple cases. Here's the mass spectrum of caffeine. There's the, sub, there's the structure. It has a molecular weight of 94, and bada bing, you get a molecular ion of around 194. Isn't that nice? Let's ignore all these fragmentation patterns most people do nowadays. So that's the mass to charge ratio. Now, uh, once you have this formula, right, 194, uh, and it's C8, H10, and 402, you can start drawing substances, but you'll have way too many. Typically, though, you can take this uh, formula, and by the way, the molecular uh, weight will not give you the formula alone, right? But if you do have that formula, and that's usually provided by an atomic absorption spectrometer, you can then apply the index of hydrogen deficiency to limit the number of possible substances. For example, this substance, benzene, has an index of hydrogen deficiency of 4. If this is uh, going too fast for you, there's a slide that's dedicated to this topic, index of hydrogen deficiency. Here we have two double bonds in one ring, so the index of hydrogen deficiency is 3, so that's kind of handy. Another thing you can do with mass spectrometry is you can, you can study isotopes. So if you just stick zirconium into this thing, you won't just get one peak because zirconium is a mixture of isotopes. You have always the same number of protons, but the number of uh, neutrons will vary, even in a pure substance of um, uh, one element. Uh, and so a mass spectrum is the quickest way to see what the abundance of each one is. This one has the greatest number of neutrons, this one has the weakest, and the abundance is right there. And all you have to do is do a weighted average and you can get the average mass. I think it's going to be a little closer to 90 than 96 since this is the most abundant isotope. So if we do a weighted average, 51% for example being 90, express it as a decimal, and 11.22%, 90.9, there's that. And just add them all up. Once you get 100% of your sample, you get an average atomic mass of 91.22, which agrees with our prediction of much closer to 90 than 96. This is an introduction to mass spectrometry.